So, I went to go see 47 Ronin. It's the major motion picture debut of director Carl Rinch. He's done a couple short films, but, but that's mostly it. And it stars Keanu Reeves and Hiroyuki Sanada, and the whole thing is based off of a classic Japanese tale. It's very, very loosely based on it, and um, I gotta say, I wasn't really expecting much going into this movie, but wow. Just, just wow. So, I'm not terribly familiar with uh, the, the Japanese folktales 47 Ronin that this film's based off of, um, but from what I can tell, it makes the transition over decently well as like a core general framework, uh, which in itself is unsurprisingly very Japanese, uh, so I'm not sure how well it translates to American audiences, but, but it's there, and they try to explain it. Um, but at the core, it's all about personal and family honor, what you have is uh, a feudal lord is tricked into committing a dishonor, uh, has to kill themselves, and the, uh, the, the family samurai, they are sort of stripped of their title of samurai. They're, 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 they're told that they're ronin, and they are forbidden from taking revenge against the man that they knew tricked their lord into committing the dishonor. So they're... The, the Ronin's honor compels them to take revenge, but at the same time compels them to not take revenge. And so you have this nice little little thing there. And unfortunately, it's there, and it's shown in the film, and you sort of see the end result of it at the, at the climax of the film, but it doesn't really do anything to explain it to audiences or really, really explore it at all. Um, but, but the framework shows up. So, so there's that, I suppose. The, the big problem lies in the stuff that the writers have added into the story of 47 Ronin. And that's not to say that, you know, you can't alter folk tales and things like that to make good movies. You can, it happens all the time. The problem is you have to add things well. It has to be interesting. You have to, you have to do it well, and they, they don't manage that, they, they don't manage that here at all. It's terrible. Um, like, okay, I can, I can go with adding in monsters and demons and stuff like that, and that's fine, you know, it allows you to make this version of Japan look like some sort of fantasy artist's Asian wet dream. It looks, it looks really nice, but I, it's fine, you do that, but you don't sort of add in another main character without sort of taking away the original main character of the story, or or at least focus on both of them decently well, but the whole um, Keanu Reeves character, Kai, he's, he's completely added into the story from what I can tell. And it's not an interesting character, he doesn't add anything to the story. He adds nothing to the story. There's no point for him being there, except to have Keanu Reeves as a, like, the, the half-Japanese guy, which, okay, I, I guess he's, what, quarter Chinese, supposedly? But, but still, he doesn't... Eh. But yeah, so, so they added that, which was stupid and didn't add anything, and actually ended up detracting from the story, because um, the, the main character from the original story is named uh, Oishi, I believe, He's still in the film, and they try to sort of do both of them as main characters, but it doesn't, it doesn't focus on either of them enough to really tell a story about either of them. It just, it just doesn't work. And then they throw in the, the, the whole evil witch character, which, you know, Nifty does some cool stuff visually, you know, decent enough actress, um, but... They, they keep on mentioning, like, taking over Japan and mountains of corpses, but the, there's a year part in the f break in the film, you know, the timeline, and nothing happens. There's no... there's no mountains of... nothing. So... and the film shows us no sort of indication of what they're going to do. Why would they do that? It's just sort of vague, yeah, we're going to take over Japan, but we're not going to actually do anything about it, and you defeating us isn't going to save Japan, because we're not actually attacking Japan, we're just talking about it sometime in the future, maybe. It's just... Can't we just have a story where two families have this long-standing feud, and, 
and one discredits and takes over the land of the other, it, that works better rather than just doing this vague, ooh, bigger stakes sort of thing. So they've taken the original story and they added in stuff that I'm sure some people thought were cool but really just ends up watering down the story and making it seem a little stupid at times. So what more can they do here? How about really, really bad dialogue? Yeah, let's go with that. I'm sure some people would throw in, oh hey, they hired Keanu Reeves, he's a horrible actor. I don't really agree with it. I don't think he's necessarily the best actor in the world, mind you, but he's not a bad actor. Um, and I mean, no one can really make dialogue that goes like, um, we can still do what we came here for, sound good. It's just always going to sound awkward. And then other points of this film really just, they come across like, I don't know, some, the, the, the writers were playing cliche dialogue mad libs with a script or something. It's, it's really, really cliche. There's, there's, I, I feel like I knew what was going to be said, like, before it was said, you know, throughout the entire film. It was just kind of, you know, um, you don't scare me, or I'm not afraid of you, you should be. It just, the whole thing was like that. It's just, just really cliche, not very well written dialogue throughout the entire thing. It's just, it's just not very well written. I mean, you know, at least at least the acting was all right. I mean, given what they had, they, 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 they did the best with what they had, folks. Actors did the best with what they were given. Unfortunately, what they were given wasn't very good, but they tried their best. Now, I'll admit, though, I can live with stupid plot and stupid writing in an action movie if you give me a really fun action movie. I mean, case in point, Pacific Rim. I love that movie. It has a kind of stupid cliché plot and very cliché dialogue, but I love it because the action scene and the, the general sense of the film, so much fun. Um, and so, you know, I, I thought from the trailers, I was, I was really hoping that 47 Ronin could really, really jump that hurdle just to be a, a fun, dumb action movie, right? It looked like it really had the chance. Plus, you got uh, Keanu Reeves who, you know, was a lot of fun to watch in The Matrix. Um, you know, he can really he can really pull off the, the martial arts thing, and a lot of the other actors really have that sort of martial arts movie background. So, you know, I was thinking it had a chance. Um, and at times you can see it come through, and, and they let you focus and watch the action, and it works. But for most of the film, you know, a good half to like 75% of the time, the action is just, it's really hard to follow. I, it's, it's just very muddled fight scenes. You, it's, you don't really follow what's going on. But then it'll like cut to a really slow scene or, or a really clearly choreographed fight scene and you're like, that, that, why can't we have more of that? And then they do something silly like throw a lantern and it explodes like some sort of high explosive thing, but you know, it looked kind of cool, I guess. It's just, it didn't look cool for enough of the time to really work even as a, as a general action movie for, for my money. Unfortunately, 47 Ronin doesn't fall into the so-bad-it's-good category. I mean, for all its stupid additions to the plot and cliché dialogue and mediocre action, it, it really is more mediocre than bad. Um, it's just, just not much there. However, it does edge enough towards the bad category than the mediocre that if you go to sort of a, a slow showing with a couple friends, you know, there's no one else around, or if you rent it in the future at some point, uh, buy a Rift Tracks, or heck, even if you can just carry on a sort of running commentary of the film in your head, this movie is a lot of fun because there's so much dumb in here that you can make fun of and enjoy with, you know, yourself, a couple friends, something like that, that it's a lot of fun when you do that. I went with uh, someone, we were, you know, one of like four folks in the theater, and I had a blast just kind of making fun of it with my friend, sort of quiet, quiet uh, tone of voice so we didn't bother the other folks behind us. But, um, yeah, it's, it's really fun if you can do that. Otherwise, 
just stay away from this film. It's not that good. Uh, it could have been good, but it's just a lost cause. Uh, which is sad, because it had the potential. But, um, anywho, until next time, folks. Enjoy film.